getting into during this broadcast. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of it. And Mantis Rider and Flyers in general, pretty potent in trying to beat that deck. Yeah, certainly has a great aggressive plan as well as enough removal to maybe keep a green-white devotion deck off balance. But this is going to be a match with a lot of fire here as we go ahead and start underway. Angel Salache, he's on your left. He's the Jeskai Agro player. He'll start on Temple of Triumph. And Festus Resendez on the right. He's on Mono Red. And Angel's deck here still with some shades of the old token build. Raise the Alarm and Hordley Outburst in his list, and those are two of the best cards for this wedge against a deck like Mono Red Aggro. Yeah, and actually a little less action at the beginning as we expected. Players just trading lands. If you look over at Festus' side, he has two mountains, but looks like he has no other creatures. And that's unusual for this kind of deck. It's a 25-creature deck, and if you look at his creature base, uh, a whole 16 of them do come down at two or lower on the curve. Yeah, now another element of Festus' deck, and this has been his signature card for the last couple of years I've watched him play in Standard, is Fanatic Amogus. Really, he's the only one playing with this card. A lot of the Devotion shells uh, don't exist in the same way that they used to, but Festus still really enjoys that card and plays it alongside some of these threads like Flame Wake Phoenix, which are nice on their own, and also Double Red. Also, Fanatic Amogus triggers the Ferocious requirement to get it out of the graveyard. Yeah, so Festus had kept a two lander on the draw. He didn't have the third land, so end step, we saw a Magma Jet Angel to get that Scry to. He did set up his third land, which had that turn three Flame Wake Phoenix, but Angel was at the ready for Lightning Strike, and Angel actually gets the first creature to stick. It's going to be Mantis Rider, right now, 18 to 17. And Festus actually, they, this, now the Mantis Rider also trades with the Lightning Strike, so both players not wanting to let the other person get a permanent damage source on the board just yet. Yeah, it's very important for both players to keep each other off balance as much as possible because, you know, with the amount of burn in both of these decks, if the threat goes uncontested for a turn or two, that might just be too much. Now, Angel's got a lot of really powerful tools in this sort of game. He's got things like Soulfire, Grandmaster, and Secret of the Way, where if the game drags out, he can try to set up a spot where these are protected or he can immediately get back a spell. And that kind of value is something that Festus doesn't really have a parallel to. Yeah, second Mantis Rider for Angel. We'll see whether or not Festus can have another Lightning Strike for it. But I think you're absolutely right. When you're looking at a deck like Mono Red Aggro, it's these lifelink cards, right? Seeker of the Way, Soulfire Grandmaster. Uh, Festus has got to not let those cards ever connect because um, when you're operating, you know, on the 20 damage plan, it seems like they'd be a really big threat. For sure, uh, particularly because the Jeskai Aggro deck is also capable of burning you out. So all those hits, they're just a huge swing in the damage race. As you see Angel here with the Rabble Master, keeping up the pressure, and uh, the life link elements are very important for Angel in this matchup. Yeah, so Festus on his own turn used Stoke the Flames to take down the Mantis Rider. But what that meant is, yeah, on the untap, Angel could make Goblin Rabble Master, a card that normally never gets to make it to the combat step, I think, in this matchup. But because a Festus was tapped out, Angel did get the free Goblin off it. It is one of the weaker cards typically in these red matchups, especially now that Wild Slash is so prevalent in the decks. But it still has spots of being very powerful. It's a really, really powerful magic card. So even if it's not as most efficient in this matchup, it's still going to have spots of being plenty good. All right, now on Festus's return, he Wild Slashes down the Rival Master, and he dashes Goblin Heel Cutter back at Angel. Right now, Angel at 15, Festus at 12. So we pass back here. Now, Festus is doing a lot of his instant speed spells on his main, main phase, and something you no, don't always see. But what's he playing around here? Well, uh, untapping with mana available, which can open up things like Negate, like Valorous Stance. Uh, just better not to get fancy. You know, Disdainful Stroke you see in these decks sometimes. That could encounter the Stoke the Flames. Sure. So Seeker of the Way is added on Angel's side. We'll see how Festus responds. He does have Fanatic of Mogus, but hasn't managed to stick many creatures on the table. That'll only deal one to Angel. And that fifth mana, but what it will do is it'll activate the Ferocious for Flame Wake Phoenix. That's going to come out of the graveyard and swing in again. Now, this is still a pretty risky spot here, even though Festus had a good turn, because if Angel has some way to remove this blocker at the end of the turn, it's going to be dealing a lot of damage and gaining life because of a secret away trigger. Yeah, it is that lifelink, which said could be so crucial here. On end step, Angel will cast Raise the Alarm. He gets two 1 1 soldiers. So now he untaps with a full four creatures. Festus is tapped out with just a 4 2 back to block. We'll see if Angel has that kill spell you're talking about. And indeed, he does. It's going to be Lightning Strike for the Fanatic. Festus with no blockers. Angel swings in for six, but more importantly, will gain three off this, the Seeker of the Way. So while Festus will drop from 12 to six, Angel goes up to 15, and the race will go decisively in Angel's favor. And at this point, Festus doesn't really have a way to keep up. Even if he has removal spells, it's going to be hard for those to keep up with the tokens. And the damage race now is firmly in Angel's favor. And yeah, back on Festus' side, he has three cards left. We see that heal cutter that he dashed, a Stoke the Flames, and a Wild Slash. 
but with at six damage, these tokens may even be enough to finish him off, and he doesn't have a great answer to tokens. Yeah, he has nothing like Arc Lightning in his main deck. Most of his blockers aren't very well equipped to handle tokens in this way, so uh, he's going to plug away here, but uh, I think that he is done for probably in a turn or two, and Angel's Hand still has Gas Laugh, a Rabble Master, a Chandra Pyro Master. So it will be, looks like Wild Slash pointing at Seeker of the Way. Flame McPhoenix swings in. Angel down to 13. Remember, Phoenix has to attack each turn. As much as Festus would like to leave it back as a blocker. What he will, it looks like, get to do is play this Goblin Heel Cutter on de defense. Because we know that that may not be very, that may not stick here. Well, this this is a play that gives Festus a chance of winning if Angel's hand is all lands. You know, that's that's the spot that Festus has to play right here. He probably can't beat a spell because he's too far behind and he's so close to dying. But this play is reasonable. If Angel has nothing but lands in hand, you can play on. Swinging with attackers, the three tokens come in. Goblin Heel Cutter will jump in front of the, go the Goblin token. Festus takes two, he's down to four. We'll see what Angel has post-combat. It's going to be Chandra Pyremaster. And one and one. A little surprised he didn't play that one pre-combat to stop the heel cutter from blocking, but what it does do is kills it now. Yeah, I think that Angel's logic here is if I ping the heel cutter and attack you, I don't have lethal. And you untap with five points of damage in play and some cards in your hand. Maybe not, so. Not inconceivable that Festus could kill you somehow. So it's a conservative yeah. looking play, but I, I think it's the correct one. Yeah, so as long as he keeps the power off the board for Festus, there's no, the chances that Festus can kill him from there becomes a lot smaller. Exactly. It looks weird. Uh, I give you that, but I understand the logic. Angel, yeah, actually, yeah, I think you're right here. Angel definitely respects Festus' ability to kill him on the way back with five points of power in play, and Angel only at 13 with no defense. Yeah, Flame Wake Phoenix plus that Stoke the Flames in Festus' hand takes down Chandra, and a lightning strike drawn from Angel will seal it up. Game one over to the Jeskai aggro player. Yeah, and the uh, Festus' slow start there is what doomed him. If there's an advantage that Festus has in the matchup, is his lands are all mountains. He gets to play stuff on time. Angel, on the other hand, has Mystic Monasteries and a variety of temples. He's gonna be a little sloppier out of the gate sometimes. Angel's cards are a lot more powerful. They're just a lot more raw power, and, and certain things like Raise the Alarm and Whirling Outburst are specifically problematic. When Festus doesn't have an early start, then he's playing Angel's game at about Angel's pace, and that's a that's the type of game that really favors Chess Guy Agro. So game one is in the books. We're gonna go, as we move to game two. If you're just joining us, this is the Star City Live coverage of the Star City Open here in Dallas. You can follow it at SC, at StarCityGames.com in SCG Live. Also on Twitch.tv, where you can join in on the Twitch chat in the conversation. This has been something that had not been available in the past. But we have brought it back here. Yeah, absolutely. And if you can, you can hop in right now and chat if you want to. Though if you are not a subscriber, you are in slow mode chat, which means you can post only once every two minutes. But for only $4.99 a month, you can get access to unlimited posting, plus custom emoticons and badges. Yeah, find out more at twitch.tv slash scg live. You see these wonderful little badges here. Like, I, I personally like like the one in the middle. Uh, also, the also I like the, ste the steampunk penguin is one of my favorite ones. Slow play turtle and myself and Cedric Phillips. A contrast in styles. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and look at the sideboard then. We talked about how Festus didn't have a way to answer tokens. You talked to specifically about the card Arc Lightning. That's something he has three of in his main deck. And then he has another pretty decent one for the matchup. I would think he has three copies of Circle of Flame. Now, I might think about that against a mirror match, but does he use that here as well? Well, I, I don't like Circle of Flame very much in the mono red aggro sideboard because the tokens, uh, it does appear that Festus is bringing it in right now. The tokens are also pretty good at blocking. So it's not, you know, I think Circle Flame is a good tool for control decks when you don't really care if the tokens are blocking. But for Festus, them playing defense is problematic. Uh, if they're in a sideboard, I assume they're coming in here. I'm not really a fan of it, but I would imagine we're going to see them. Now, do you think, one of the cards that I think Circle of Flame is really great against is Goblin Rabble Master. Their, creep, their tokens have no choice, really, but to swing into Circle of Flame. Now, is this, the question for me, though, is this the kind of matchup where Angel even keeps in his copies of Goblin Rabble Master? There are competing philosophies on that issue. Some people say, just cut your Rabble Master against decks with wild slashes because the tempo of swing is too bad for you. There's another side of the argument that just says Rabble Master is too good. You often will walk away with a token at the minimum if you time it right, and you just don't cut it any matchup. I'm in the first camp myself. Rabble Master would be a card that I would cut if I was in Angel spot, but there's no guarantee that happens because the raw power level card is so high that some people just never get away from it. Sure, certainly if, I, if a Rabble Master 
hits the table and is not killed right away, it really can run away with the game. Yes, for sure. So it, it's rare, but it still has its spots. On Angel's side, he has a Dig Through Time, two copies of Sarkin the Dragon Speaker, two copies of Arc Lightning, a Jeskai Charm, two Disdainful Strokes, a Negate, two copies of Wild Slash, a Hordling Outburst, a Glare of Heresy, and a Valorous Dance. Really like the additional copy of Hordling Outburst, the two copies of Wild Slash, and the two copies of Arc Lightning, I think are no-brainers. Beyond that, I think the one Jeskai Charm and the one Negate are borderline, kind of could come in, may not come in sort of cards. Yeah, interesting. In the matchup, do you feel the Jeskai aggro deck becomes, like, settles into a more control role after sideboard? Well, Angel's got a lot more lands that come into play tapped. He's got a lot more powerful top end. He has the ability to gain life. He can play a slower game. I think he is the control deck in the matchup, although th what's nice about Jeskai aggro is it's a fluid deck. It can play both roles. Uh, depending yeah. on the quality of Festus's draw, though, that's going to determine what role he wants to take. There are a couple of things I want to mention here. So Angel with copies of Hordling Outburst in the sideboard. That's to me something I don't always see here, though he does. He has three in the main, has moved one into the board. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, he's got a lot of different things going on here. He has some elements of the token strategy here with Hordling Outburst and the Raise the Alarms. He still has two copies of Jeskai Charm. Most people have moved to zero or one copies. He has two copies of Chandra. Again, zero or one copies are kind of the numbers you see. A lot of creatures in the list. So you got to make room somewhere, and that's just one of the Hordling Outbursts. He does have it in the sideboard, and I have to imagine the fourth one comes in here. Yeah, well, we're underway again. Festus with no creature turn one and two, one or two. This time he's on the play. It looks like he has kept a hand based on the strength of double Searing Blood. This is a four of in his sideboard as well. And Festus might be kind of a control deck himself right now. His hand is all removal. He's just drawn Circle of Flame. He might be settling up for just a, a really long game here. It does look that way. We see on passing back to Angel on end step, he actually will have the first creatures. That's going to be Raise the Alarm. So maybe that Circle of Flame will get some mileage this game. Looks like Festus will Searing Blood one of the Soldier Tokens, though. So I, I think the, the philosophy here is, you know, he just wants to stick this when he can because he's on a burn strategy. I think I would have preferred to hold the Searing Blood there and just take the hits. There's going to be some spot for you to stick it. And, you know, now this is happening. Right, now Angel does. Yeah, you're right. He plays a tap land and a Seeker of the Way, so certainly another great target for Searing Blood. Festus on his turn will, though, use his second Searing Blood on Seeker. So Angel down to 14. Yep. But no fourth land for Festus, so he didn't have a chance yet to deploy that Circle of Flame. I believe he actually has perhaps two copies in hand right now. He's got a lot of burn. He's got no creatures, and I wonder if he just made a, a swap into a control deck himself. Now, Circle of Flame, if you can get a second one on the board, it doesn't seem half bad. There's a lot of X2s in Angel's yeah. deck. And Circle of Flame is going to be pretty fine here. I mean, again, Festus with no real creatures in play. Yeah, now just cast Hordling Outburst. Yeah, this is great. I mean, as long as, you know, Festus is sideboarded in such a way that those tokens are not very good at blocking, then this Circle Flame is going to be pretty great. Yeah, now there was a Jeskai Charm drawn for Angel, so we may see him use that at some point to get through the Circle of Flame. On a turn, though, he'll play Mantis Rider. Uh, that'll swing in for three. Festus taps the card. Now, remember, Circle Flame only hits creatures without flying. See on the art there, you can fly, because over. You can fly over the flame. fire. Yeah, Right, would not make sense otherwise. Though, to be fair, fires go really high. I don't know. Mantis Rider flies even higher than that. Yeah. All right, Lightning Strike will take down the Mantis Rider. You have to draw the line somewhere, right? <laughs> so that's where the line is. Yeah, before it goes down, Angel will go ahead and you stoke the flames back at Festus. And he is Festus doing a good job of staying alive here, but he doesn't seem like he's making too much forward momentum, and that's a lot of it is because of his lands. And Angel will swing Storm Breath Dragon for the turn. That'll put Festus down to seven. And now the problem is, as you mentioned before, that Jeskai Charm, we're getting to a spot here where Angel's going to be able to go plus one, plus one mode, pre-combat. Right. Now the Circle of Flame doesn't matter, and that's going to be lethal. Yeah, Circle of Flame seems, it, it's powerful, but it's really a, a soft sort of control card. There's a lot of ways around it. Yeah, it, there's no guarantee it's going to do anything. Now, a lot of these Jeskai aggro, Jeskai token decks, they've gotten away from Jeskai charm. Right. But, but Angel has quite a few in his list, two in the main and one on the board. So uh, not a good spot here for Festus. Searing Blood and Wild Slash on Storm Breath Dragon. I like Festus main phasing it here. It certainly keeps it alive from Jeskai Charm. However, the Jeskai Charm looks like it's going to be lethal on the next turn. Yeah, Lightning Strike also in Angel's hand. So this is, he's got it rolled up in multiple ways. And we go here and that will be the Jeskai Charm to 1-1 one, one the team. That'll swing through the, through the fire and at Festus. Eight damage goes across and Angel Salache, two to zero is your quick winner in game one. Yeah, Festus took a pretty interesting role in that matchup. Looked like he converted to a control deck. I wouldn't be surprised if he cut most of his one drops and tried to lean on Circle of Flame, but 
Angel with a lot of really good tools for that sort of game plan. Flyers, burn spells, and Jeskai Charm there made sure the tokens were not completely shut off. Yeah, so congratulations, Tim. For Festus, it's an 0-1 start. Remember, though, it's 7-2 records are what's going to be needed at the very least, to, or the very most, to make day two. That's the way to lock it up. Sometimes we see other records getting in, but it'll be an uphill battle for the mono red mage. Now, in, in, interestingly enough, this is the exact number that we hit in Baltimore a few weeks ago, 762. So now we have a tie for biggest open. 7-2 and two was the required record to make day two. X2 and 1 fell a little bit short. In a lot of our opens, when we're in the you know the 500 player territory, it's usually X3 is good, but this is going to be a, a tough day ahead for everyone in the room, even if you win round one, but now especially for Festus, who needs to rip off a 7-1 to play in day two. Yeah, so Mono Red was actually one of the